All right, Aftershocks TV, we're back here with you guys and gals for another episode, and we've got a great one today for you folks. We're going back to the early, early days of the Bay Area thrash metal scene, as these guys were one of the first ones to do it out of San Francisco as part of that first wave of thrash metal back in the early 80s. And I'm pleased to have with me from the mighty trauma, we've got drummer Chris Gustafson here on Aftershocks. Chris, thanks for coming on, man. How are you today? Hey, I'm doing great, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me on your show. Absolutely, man. Thanks for coming on. So, so Chris, trauma, man. You guys are getting ready now to hit the road next month on the Digital Alliance tour with the legendary Queens Rake yeah. and Marty Friedman. It starts on March 3rd in Orlando, Florida, wraps up in St. Petersburg, Florida, uh, in the middle of April there. A hell of a tour and lineup, man, of course. And mm -hmm. yeah, so I mean, Chris, so I guess go ahead and start us off, talk a little bit about the upcoming tour and how you guys are gearing up for it and really. I mean, how did this all come to fruition? This has obviously got to be one of the biggest tours, I guess, the band's done in, in the band's history, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Well, it kind of came around since we, uh, you know, unfortunately, our original singer, Donnie Hillier, passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Allen came into the fold, and he was in a band uh, that toured with Queensryche in Europe. And I, I, I believe those guys had been friends for a, a long period of time. Anyways, he Todd uh, from Queens where I heard our new album and really liked it and uh, played it for the band. And then they offered to, uh, you know, have us on board to do this tour. And uh, that's kind of how that happened. And uh, we're really super stoked and excited about it. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, we're definitely looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no doubt. And you just brought up what you said about the new record. I mean, uh, obviously, rave reviews with the band's latest LP, Awakening, mm -hmm. uh, which came out last summer. So obviously, everyone's had a good chance to really digest the record. In my opinion, I think it's the best record that you guys have put out over the last three since you've, uh, you know, reformed about 10 years ago. Right on. And you, yeah, you guys really went heavy, you know, on this one. It's a barn burner, you know I mean? It's, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, the thing is, is obviously, you know, I mean, like you just mentioned about Donnie, you know, the, the unfortunate passing of uh, right. late Donnie Hillier. Um, but I mean, if you're going to find someone to replace him, I mean, ex vicious rumors vocalist, Brian Allen, man, he is the perfect guy. In my opinion, I mean, he's just got such a great range and just a, an overall, just an excellent metal vocalist. So, I mean, how did um, how did you guys want it with Brian coming into the fold? Like you said, I know you said he played with a band that obviously uh, at tour with Creedsrike. So, talk about getting Brian into the band. Yeah, we were, you know, we we were, you know, this is during the pandemic. You know, we were writing the material for the new album, and uh, <clears throat> I was literally at the recording studio getting ready to track drums. And I got the call that Donnie was really sick, might not make it through the night. Unfortunately, that came true. And so we just, like, I canceled the session for that day. And then we waited, I don't know, two, three months, uh, trying to figure out what we're going to do, if, if anything at all. And the producer, Juan Ortega, said, oh, you know, I may, I may know a guy who might be really interested in possibly doing this. And we started talking to him. And one thing led to another. We had him come down and we got together and played and everything. Thank God just freaking clicked. And he liked us. We liked him. And uh, he went in the studio and sang on a couple of the new tracks. And we were like, oh, my God, you know, this this, you know, this is going to be pretty cool. You know, mm -hmm. so it was a miracle that we were able to get the guy, you know, that that quick. You know, mm -hmm. we could have been looking. We could still be looking now, you know. Sure. Yeah. You know, so yeah, yeah. yeah well, I was gonna say, I mean, were so were you guys a planet? I mean, was this record already? Were you at, like maybe at least writing for the record while Donnie was still with us? Or oh yeah, you, okay. We started writing a lot of the tunes in like uh, 2019. Okay, <clears throat> you know, towards the end of 2019, and then we played in uh, January. We did a gig gig at the House of Blues down in Anaheim, and we opened up for a. Uh, metal allegiance down mm. there okay and then some months later is when donnie got sick you know and uh you know it was a shock to everybody you know mm. Mm. no yeah. yeah i mean what, did you guys think at any point when he passed was it like okay i think we're done i mean oh I hell mean, yeah yeah okay i was gonna say he's oh, yeah. only vocalist for 40 years you know going back 40 <laughs> years almost so yeah, yeah. Plus, plus he was like my yeah. brother you know, mm -hmm. I mean, I knew the dude from, you know, 
long time ago, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a rough moment to say the least. He he actually wrote a lot of the lyrics for the for the Awakening album. Oh, okay, okay. And then there's a couple parts I can't remember what song it is, but there's like two songs where we actually kept his voice on some of the backing uh, vocals. Oh, very cool. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's great, man. That's great. Well, like you know, just going back to the musical direction, like I was saying, I mean, this is definitely an old school metal album along the likes of of the band's uh, debut classic scratch and scream and you know like i said the last two records rapture and wrath and as the world dies to me they were more of like a mid-tempo hard rock and sort of record yeah but like i was saying you know awakening really has just got that classic speed and thrash metal sound that you guys were known for obviously back in the early 80s especially mm -hmm. with your drums the increase in the tempo of the songs just from the get-go man were just you know just on fire. I mean, the best example of that obviously is the first single off the record "Walk Away" that came out last summer. Mm -hmm. So I guess you know, just talk a little bit, about Chris, about the band's return to the original style and sound that you guys had from those early days. I did. Did Brian coming in? Did that really allow you? I guess maybe to get a little more heavier in there as well, opposed to what you were doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, basically, with the Rapture and Wrath record, I'll just go back a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. I didn't. I mean, wasn't really too much of a fan of that because we were just trying to get a sense of if people would even be interested in hearing anything from trauma mm -hmm. at the time, because we were gone for so freaking long, but mm -hmm. we got a lot of good reviews off that record. And then we did as the world dies, it got a little more, uh, you know, modernized, I guess. But then when we started doing the awakening, I was kind of like, you know, we need to go back to our roots a little mm -hmm. bit. You know, we got to, you know, this is like a, you know, it's, it, it's, you know, listen to the old scratch and scream record, basically. And we got to take, I wouldn't say elements from that, but mm -hmm. just, it, it has to be, you know, faster tempos, you know, the, you know, faster tempos, guitar riffs, overall just heavier, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what we shot for. And, uh, you know, we worked our asses off to, to, to make that album. And uh, I think I think the way it came out was pretty cool. I think we I think we achieved what we were after.
Yeah, it's it's a great record. It really is. And and you know, um and, you know, yeah, yeah, no, it is. It's a great record, man. You know, and, and like I remember when when you guys first reunited like 10 years ago for the re-release of, of Scratch and Scream, I know in Shrapnel. Um, I thought to myself that you know you guys would probably play some shows, you know, do maybe a tour, maybe overseas or something, even release possibly a new record, you know, just sort of put a book in on the nice, you know, career of the band and the legacy. Um, because usually, I mean, that's what most bands who haven't released music, you know, in right. 30, you know, years at the time that you guys hadn't, you know, released music in that long. Um, but here now it's here it is now, 10 years later, you guys are more active than ever. You released three, you know, new records over the last 10 years. You're now going on tour with legendary artists like Queens Reich and Marty Freeman. Mm -hmm. And obviously, this is obviously even after the unfortunate loss of, of, of Donnie. Right. I mean, obviously, and not a, a very easy guy to replace because he was an amazing singer. <laughs> you know, how, how did I mean how did this renaissance happen the way it is now? I mean, did it just sort of take on a life of its own after you did the reunion 10 years ago? Was this something no. that you were, did you personally no, really not. want to? To take no. this, okay, talk about that. No, yeah. it, it, this is this is a constant. Uh, I mean, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I, I don't, I don't like the bullshit. Mm. This has been a, a, this has been very difficult, you know, sure. to say the least. Uh, you know, uh, I've been in the, you know, even when trauma uh, was defunct all those years ago, we stopped doing shit. I, I, I always stayed busy as a drummer doing mm. other things, you know. And I saw that I've seen the business from all those years ago and what it once was to, to now. I knew I knew of it, um, how bad it was and everything. But, uh, uh, you know, ever since we resurrected this thing in 2013, we've had kind of a revolving door of people in and out of it, you know, mm -hmm. uh, for one reason or another. And, uh, you know, it's it, it, it's definitely not an easy thing to do. I'm very grateful that uh, we do have, uh, you know, people interested, you know, genuinely, genuinely interested in the band, mm -hmm. uh, knew the band from all those years ago, but uh, you know, uh, they, it, it, you know, we're all passionate about it. Um, you know, um, we just want to try to have some fun doing this and, mm -hmm. and playing the shows and, you know, all that, but uh, you know, it's it's a grind yeah i mean because you know you're talking about a 30-year break I mean, you're essentially starting over from scratch really in a day and age of music that's not it's as we as you know it's not very kind of musicians as a whole let alone uh, you know a band that hasn't been active in a, in, a, in some decades i mean it's kind of right. quite remarkable i mean what not what you guys are doing right now it really is i mean getting on this tour now having this great record out man i just got to give it to you because that that's Something you don't see very often, you know, what yeah. you guys are accomplishing right now, you know. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. So let me ask you, Chris, too, you know, with, with, yeah. with Scratch and Scream, I mean, it's such a great record. You know, I rem I really recommend everybody out there to go ahead, if they haven't heard that record, man, to go check that out. Because it's it's a classic to me. I mean, you know, unfortunately, I think, obviously, there was a lot of reasons I think it didn't get really the notoriety it did, obviously, at that time, you know with Cliff Burton going on a Metallica, you know, just the whole, the the threshing explosion in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, even though you guys were thresh band, like to me, you guys obviously had always had more influences, though, than just thresh. You had a lot of that New, new Haven British heavy metal influences in right. there, you know, some of the 70s stuff. I mean, I guess the question I ask is, I guess just talk a little bit about what, what happened. Why did it take 30 years to release a follow-up to such a great record? <laughs> I mean, you know, I've just always wanted to know that, you know, it's just... yeah. You know, man. Um, you know, all those years ago, the 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 problem was is we just we really didn't have any direction. You know, it, it kind of could sound like bullshit to a certain degree, but you know, we were uh, uh, we were still playing gigs and everything like that. You know, but it, it it just didn't seem like it was really going anywhere. To tell you the truth, okay. you know, and everybody started getting a little, you know, I don't know. Uh, if everybody's kind of started doing different things. So the, mm. the, the next thing we knew, you know, there really wasn't a band anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, me and Donnie stayed in touch over the years and we always would joke around like, you know, Hey, maybe, we, maybe one day we should try putting trauma back together. And it's like, okay. And then another two, three years, four years would go by. And then 
2013 came and Mike Varney was really interested in doing a re-release on Scratch and Scream. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he said, maybe you guys should have a band in case you get any offers to go play festivals over in Europe or anything. So we did, you know, uh, we tried the original lineup that played on the Scratch and Scream album. But at that point in time, not everybody could could really commit to doing it because it was it was it was going to be a pretty heavy duty commitment, you know. So that's when we started having to recruit people, other people, to get into it. Mm -hmm. And then 2014, we played the uh, Headbangers Open Air Festival over in Germany, and that was kind of an indication from the fans that were there that uh, had a, we had a really good, uh, they received us really, really well. You know, it was kind of shocking to be honest. Mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, maybe we got something here. So we just, you know, kept, kept at it. But, uh, you know, I mean, it's a long time from when we stopped till then, you know, um, mm -hmm. we knew we had to record a new album at some point. Mm -hmm. And we weren't too sure which direction to go in at the time. And the guitar player we had at the time, a real good friend of mine, is more of a hard rock kind of guitar player. Okay. Really good guitar player. But uh, we had to kind of test the water first, like I said, and just if that makes any sense. And just see if there's even, you know, with journalists and people like that, even if there's any interest mm -hmm. at all, mm -hmm. you know. And there was. And that's when we did As the World Dies. Mm -hmm. you know up till now so yeah no it's, it's, it's a story about that
you know, and one of the things is about trauma, you know, obviously you guys, the band name is always going to be obviously forever tied sort of to Metallica because of Cliff being in the early version of the band. Mm -hmm. um, and although I, I mean, it's got to obviously be an honor. I would think that, you know, it's obviously a great thing for, for many reasons to, to be tied to that. I, I would think on the flip side though, I mean, here's a guy, I mean, he never recorded a, a record with the band and yet, you know, when, when right. a lot of people hear, the name trauma and Bay area metal, the first thing they think of is, Oh, that's Cliff's old band. I mean, they don't think of, Oh, that's the band that put out that great debut scratch and scream or the band with this right. new great record awakening. So obviously people are always going to relate, uh, you know, the band name to cliff and it's been no, oh, now over 40 years since he was even in the band and you've got right, four right, full lengths right. that he's never played on. So again, of course, great to have that, but it does it get to you a bit old or frustrating when a lot of middle fans can't really seem to look past that cliff connection and and you know maybe sometimes you just don't give the band a fair shake because they just think of that being cliff's old band i mean what's your take on that yeah i mean could be you know i mean i i mean i i look at it this way i mean you know i saw metallica when they were when they were starting out at like the old waldorf and i mean they blew my mind when i saw them you mm -hmm. know i mean th th these guys haven't stopped in 40 years you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, Cliff was in trauma at one point in time. You know, he jumped. You know, you know, uh, he had the band's blessing to to go over to Metallica. You know, and uh, you know, wish him the best of luck. And I give I give Metallica a hell of a lot of credit for what they've accomplished over all these years. And <clears throat> you know, if if people want to, you know, people, everyone's got an opinion. You know. And if people want to say what they want to say, that's cool. But the only real way that I could think that to conquer that is, you know, doing stuff like we're about to do, go out and do this tour with Queensryche and, you know, really just get out there and really just uh, do what we do, you know, mm -hmm. just play, play live. And, uh, you know, uh, this is something the bands wanted to do for a long time, you know, mm -hmm. so uh just like i said opinions don't really bother me in any way okay know? yeah i mean i mean is it, but is it one of those things that maybe one of the goals you guys have is sort of to like now create this sort of new and you know sort of reinvigorate the legacy of the band so that you could sort of shake off that and just be remembered now as just trauma the, the great yeah, I mean, metal band yeah i mean mm -hmm. if we can if we can you know get to a point of doing that yeah that'd be great you know but mm -hmm. uh I think I think that's always going to be a part of the band's history for for until this mm. thing is no more, you know. And that's fine, you know. Mm. It was a, it was a a really cool time back then, you know. And uh, I'm sure there's other stories out there of, of you know Megadeth and all these other bands that that the same thing happened with, mm. you know. It's just like uh, history of the make history in the making of of all this, you know. Mm -hmm. so yeah no yeah makes sense absolutely yeah no doubt yeah. so uh before you know i was talking before about shrapnel records earlier and you mentioned uh mike varney obviously in his iconic label the mm -hmm. first independent metal label ever um to, to in existence and of course you know you're going to be playing now on tour with another, another alumni of the infamous label uh, to, in uh, marty freeman who of course was a staple on that label with you know his band old band hawaii cacophony and the soul albums as well yeah. Did you did so did you know Marty at all when you when he when he first moved here to the Bay at all? Did you ever get to play with him back in the day? No. You know, someone asked me that earlier. You know, man, I I I don't remember, to tell you the truth, man. We the, we played so many freaking gigs in the early 80s mm -hmm. with so many different bands, man. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a long time ago. A long time know. ago. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it's uh, kind of like I can remember some stuff, but it's like you know, it, it, I mean, there was music going on seven nights a week, you know, mm -hmm. for years. Mm -hmm. So it's like you can't remember every every freaking band you played with, you know. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, maybe maybe when I run into him on this tour, maybe he'll he'll say, "Oh, you remember when we did played at the Stone or whatever it was?" Mm -hmm. You know, it could happen. Sure. Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, I mean, how how crazy is it just to think now? Here it is, though, forty years later. I mean, you're in your tour now with Queensrÿche and him, and you know, doing this this you know big digital line store here in the states. It's, you got to pinch yourself, I guess. I mean, you couldn't have really, I guess, 
ask for it to go any better, you know, especially with all what you've been through. Like you said, it's been a grind, obviously, with Donnie's passing. I mean, it just, it's just got to be a great feeling, though, for you to have to, you know, to be on this tour. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it's like, uh, it's hard to describe, man, because it's, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, there's been a lot of ups and downs, man. You know, just a, mm-hmm. a tremendous amount of, uh, uh, you know, bad things, man. I, I don't want to get too weirded out with that, but it's like, uh, you know, it, it, it hasn't been easy. And mm-hmm. yes, to, to be per- perfectly uh, uh, honest with you, man, I'm very thankful that we're able to do this, you know, and uh, everybody's stoked to do it. And uh, we're looking to go out there and kick some ass and really have some fun and meet people. And, uh, you know, and w- we hope everybody likes what we do, you know. And it's mm-hmm. I feel really blessed to have the opportunity to be able to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You no, know? absolutely. Absolutely. So I did see that, obviously, uh, you know, uh, bassist Greg Christian's no longer in the band. Who do you got going on with you now uh, on tour on bass? Do you got someone uh, lined up? As of yet, or? Yeah, yeah, we have Michael Spencer that's going to be okay. filling in uh, right now. Okay. Uh, he's a bass player, played with Flotsam and Jetsam mm-hmm. years ago. Uh, mm-hmm. Really great guy, really good bass player, and uh, that's who's on the bass right now. All right, fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Well, once again, the band is trauma. The latest release is titled Awakening. It's out now on Massacre Records. Go see the band live starting next month on the Digital Alliance Tour with Queensryche and Marty Friedman. And, Chris, go ahead. Let the viewers and listeners know where they can keep up with trauma, buy the record, merch, and all that good stuff. Well, yeah. Well, go, go you know, check our website out, www.traumametal.com. Uh, uh, we got merch, CDs, all, all the information on the band, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So we hope – we see you out there on the road and I guarantee you a good time. Absolutely. Anything else you want to add about what's going on in band, you know, uh, the news or anything that's going on right now, or is you just get gearing up for the tour and yeah, we're just gearing up for the tour. We're starting to play around with some ideas for some new tracks. Uh, we could be recording again sometime. I wouldn't say this year, maybe towards the later part of this year, maybe, uh, Hopefully in the fall we may head be have the opportunity to go over to Europe again. So uh, we we do have some stuff in the works. So right. try to keep it alive. Oh well, you definitely keep it alive with this great new record, Awakening, Chris. You know, and yeah, absolutely. Everybody, go ahead and check them out on the road with Queens Reich and Marty Friedman. Digital Alliance tour starts March the third in Orlando. And Chris, I uh, appreciate you coming on, man, and talking oh, about man, drama. Thank you. Thank yeah, you for your time too. Absolutely. And good luck on the road, man. And uh, you know, we'll see you uh we'll see you out there for sure soon. Cool, cool, All man. Right. Well, thanks right. again, brother.